Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Muneeb Hamid with the news of this hour. Let's begin with the top stories first. United States President Joe Biden has set out to undo key policies of his predecessor, Donald Trump, on his first day in the Oval Office. Biden signed 15 executive orders that included ending the ban on entries from Muslim countries. The orders include Washington's return to the Paris Climate Accord and reversing the process of leaving World Health Organization. They also strengthened the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic that has claimed over 400,000 lives in the United States alone. Twenty people have been killed and 30 others wounded in twin suicide blasts in Iraqi capital city of Baghdad. Police say death toll from the attack inside a crowded market in Baghdad's Tayaran Square could rise. No group has claimed the responsibility yet. A complete shutdown is being observed in Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir's capital, Srinagar, to mark the 31st anniversary of Gol Kadal massacre. The All-Parties Hurriyat Conference had called for the shutdown, which was supported by all other political and trade organizations. Over 50 people were martyred when Indian troops opened fire on protesters in Gol Kadal area of Srinagar on this day in 1990. In Brazil, over 1,300 people have died from COVID-19 and more than 64,000 have tested positive overnight. Pakistan has reported over 2,300 new cases and 54 deaths in the past 24 hours, taking the toll to 11,157. While globally the virus has claimed over 2 million and 73,000 lives and infected nearly 97 million people so far. And in football, Juventus beat Napoli 2 0 to lift the Italian Super Cup for the ninth time. Cristiano Ronaldo netted his 760th career goal, followed by substitute Alvaro Morata, sealing the win for his side. And these were the headlines news in detail after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now let's have the news in detail. We'll start from the United States of America, where President Joe Biden has set out uh, to undo key policies of his predecessor, Donald Trump, on his very first day in the Oval Office. Heading to the White House after the inauguration, Biden tweeted, there was no time to waste in tackling crisis. This report has details. Joe Biden kicked off his presidency by signing 15 executive orders, calling them the starting points of a bold and vital policy agenda. The orders include ending the ban on entries from Muslim countries. These also include Washington's return to the Paris Climate Accord and reinstate ties with the World Health Organization. The orders strengthen the fight against COVID-19, which has claimed over 400,000 lives in the U.S. alone. Biden also revoked Trump's emergency declaration, which helped fund the construction of a wall at the U.S.-Mexico border. Mexico has welcomed the move. Meanwhile, Democrats have taken control of the U.S. Senate. White's President Kamala Harris swore in three new members to give the party a narrow grip on Congress. Democrats hold a 221 to 211 majority in the House of Representatives. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely, 
without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. Now, 23 people have been killed and over 50 others wounded in twin suicide blasts in Iraq's capital city of Baghdad. The police say the attackers targeted a crowded market in Baghdad's Tayaran Square. The Iraqi military said two attackers wearing explosive vests blew themselves up among shoppers. The Interior Ministry said the death toll from the attack could rise as many among the wounded are in critical condition. No group has claimed the responsibility yet. It was the first suicide attack to strike Baghdad in nearly two years. Now, a complete shutdown is being observed in Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir's capital, Srinagar, to mark the 31st anniversary of the Gul Kadal massacre. The all-party Suryath conference had called for the shutdown, which was supported by all other political and trade organizations. Over 50 people were martyred when Indian troops opened fire on protesters in Gaul Kadal area of Srinagar on this day in 1990. Meanwhile, India has deployed additional troops en route to Srinagar and all other district headquarters in the valley. Meanwhile, Pakistan has urged the United Nations to ask India to release Kashmiri leader Muhammad Yasin Malik. In a letter to UN Secretary General Islamabad's envoy, Muni Rakram called for an immediate halt to Malik's illegal incarceration. Akram termed Malik's detention in New Delhi's Tihar jail a gross human rights violation. The letter contained an appeal from the detainee's wife, saying continued torture has left her husband in a very fragile state. The envoy also highlighted the continued incarceration of Kashmiri political activist Asiya Andhrabi by India. He said UNHCR and various other rights groups have pressed New Delhi to repeal its draconian laws used to suppress political leadership. In India, unions of farmers protesting against new agricultural laws are meeting to decide on the government's offer. Prime Minister Modi's government has offered to halt the implementation of the contentious reforms for 18 months. The majority of farm leaders say the repeal of the laws remain their main objective and demand. However, some believe the union should negotiate to extend the suspension of the laws. Farmers are also due to meet the centre for their 11th round of negotiations tomorrow. Meanwhile, thousands continue to protest against reforms they say expose them to exploitation by corporations. In the past 58 days of protests, more than 80 farmers have lost their lives, out of which four have committed suicide. Moving on now, the United States has called China's move to sanction if of former Trump officials unproductive and cynical. A spokesperson for President Joe Biden's National Security Council urged Americans from both parties to condemn the action. Emily Holmes said imposing these curves on Inauguration Day is seemingly an attempt to play to partisan divides. Earlier, China imposed sanctions on outgoing U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and 27 other top officials. Beijing accused them of lying and cheating and said Pompeo and the others planned promoted and executed moves that interfered in the in internal affairs. Now in Brazil, over 1,300 people have died from COVID-19 and more than 64,000 have tested positive overnight. Globally, the virus has claimed over 2,073,000 lives and infected nearly 97 million people. While mass vaccination campaigns have started in certain countries, the pandemic continues to ravish the world. The death toll in the U.S. has surged past 406,000 with only 24 and a half million cases. China is set to impose strict COVID testing requirements during the Lunar New Year holiday season, when tens of millions of people are expected to travel. The country reported 144 new cases, marking the highest number of daily infections since March 2020. In France, the health ministry has reported over 300 deaths and more nearly 27,000 new confirmed cases. 
Health officials have expressed alarm after a study showed the UK's third lockdown is failing to curb the spread of the virus. Meanwhile, Dubai's authorities have ordered hospitals to cancel non-essential surgery for the next month after a surge in cases. In Zimbabwe, the government has ordered work from home for civil servants following the deaths of two cabinet ministers. But Australia has called for a special travel bubble with Pacific Island nations after the fourth day of zero infections. Meanwhile, in Pakistan, COVID-19 has claimed 54 more lives overnight. This pushes the death toll to 11,103. The health ministry says 2,363 new cases were detected in the past 24 hours. The number of cases has risen to over 524,000, while over 478,000 have recovered. Currently, there are more than 35,000 active coronavirus infections in the country. Special Assistant to the Prime Minister, Dr. Faisal Sultan, said the government aims to procure at least 1 million doses of vaccines by March. He said the government ultimately aimed to inoculate 70% of the population against the virus. The Turkey says Greek expansion in the Ionian Sea does not affect Ankara's claims over the Asian Sea. Talking to the media, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Hami Aksoy said Turkey has vital rights and interests in the semi-enclosed area. He underlined that Turkey's position on the matter remains unchanged. Earlier, the Greek parliament approved legislation to extend the country's territorial waters along its western coastline from 6 to 12 nautical miles. Now, this comes ahead of the resumption of exploratory talks between Athens and Ankara over contested maritime claims in the Aegean Sea. Meanwhile, in Sudan, armed men attempted to storm the residence of a provincial governor in the Darfur region. The incident comes days after tribal violence in the region killed more than 200 people. Officials said the attackers were repelled by guards and no injuries were reported. In a statement, the governor said the incident sought to create instability and chaos in the province. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack yet. Meanwhile, in Kyrgyzstan, the Central Election Commission has announced the results of the presidential election held on 10th of January. The final results recognize Adair Zaparov as the country's president with over 79% of votes. The commission said out of 3.5 million registered voters, more than 1.3 million people cast their ballot. It also approved the results of a referendum on the future form of government in Kyrgyzstan. According to the election commission, over 81% of voters said yes to the presidential system, while only 10% voted for a parliamentary system. Some 4% voted against both. Meanwhile, President-elect Japarov is expected to take office in the coming week. Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain, is at risk of turning into a dumping site. So Nepalese authorities have taken matters into their hands to turn the trash into treasure. Used oxygen bottles, torn tents, ropes, broken ladders, Canned and plastic wrappers discarded by climbers and trekkers litter Mount Everest and the surrounding areas. Trash is handled by a local environmental group, the Sagar Matha Pollution Control Committee. But the task in a remote region that has no roads is a huge challenge. Garbage is dumped or burned in open pits, causing air and water pollution as well as contamination of the soil. Number of tourists also and only. Around 50 to 60,000 tourists come annually. To support these tourists, there are guides and porters as well. The waste of all these people gets accumulated here. So waste management is a challenge. Trash collected from the 8,848 meter tall peak is said to be transformed into art and displayed in a nearby gallery. This is a unique idea to collect garbage and display it in a museum. This will further increase tourism. At the same time, this will also lead to waste management and will encourage the young generation to visit the area. 
Sherpa said under a Carry Me Back initiative. Each returning tourist and guide will be requested to take a bag containing one kilogram of garbage back to Lukla Airport, from where the trash will be airlifted to Kathmandu. In 2019, an estimated 80,000 trekkers, climbers and guides visited the area. More news coming up in this bulletin after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, the Italian Coast Guard has discovered the body of a dead whale after they followed a calf in distress at sea. The Coast Guard called it probably one of the largest whales ever found in the Mediterranean. The dead mammal was spotted near the popular tourist destination of Sorrento. The Coast Guard said it towed the whale to the port of Naples. The officials said marine biologists will analyze the carcass for a cause of death. They added the whale skeleton will eventually be put on display in a museum. Meanwhile, the calf has since disappeared into the sea. Coast Guard members continue to monitor for any more sightings of the calf. Now in the French Alps, Monsieur Rémy Coste and his team of dogs emerged victorious in the Epic La Grande Odessi Dog Sled Challenge. The Frenchmen won the race in Valsenis region after beating other teams in the 10th and final stage. Except 2017's cost has been winning all editions of the race since 2016. Germany, Sylvia Ulrich and Jean Combazet from France came second and third respectively. The 17th edition of the competition, which kicked off on 9th of January, saw 55 mushers and 500 dogs put through their paces. Though the 400-kilometer long course offers breathtaking views, this year's race was closed to the public due to COVID-19 restrictions. Now, Northern Ireland hold Brexit responsible for the food supply problems in the country. Irish Foreign Minister Simon Coveney says there are now a certain amount of checks on goods going between Britain and Northern Ireland. In an interview, Coveney said these checks are stalling smooth operations. The Foreign Minister said the supermarket shelves were full before Christmas. But he said now there are some issues in terms of supply chains, so that is clearly a Brexit issue. China's three telecom giants have requested the New York Stock Exchange to review its decision to delist them. The announcement of review requests came after President Joe Biden's inauguration. In near identical statements, the company said they complied with market rules as well as regulatory requirements. The firm said they have also asked for a stay on trading suspensions while the review was undertaken. The review will be scheduled for at least 25 business days from the date the request is filed. The New York Exchange delisted China Unicom, China Mobile and China Telecom on former President Trump's executive order. Meanwhile, European stocks are trading mixed as unprecedented COVID-19 surge dampens optimism from Wall Street's overnight record high gains. Europe's stock 600 has gained close to half a percent, while Germany's DAX has also added just under half a percent. Italy's FTSE, MIB has also edged up marginally, but London's FTSE and CAC 40 in Paris have dipped fractionally under the flat line. Earlier Asian bourses traded higher as investors rallied to the positive sentiment on Wall Street. With that, we come to the end of this bulletin. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus News.